I pledge, pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United, United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, roll call, please. Jamie Bowman? Here. Frank Myers? Here. Marvin Patterson? Here. Donna Roush? Here. Casey Benner? Here. We have a quorum. So, do we have approval of the agenda for tonight? Second. Okay, I'll see who say aye. Uh, uh, okay, the approval of minutes from November 19th, 2018. Never mind, I make a motion. I'll second it. All who say aye? Aye. Uh, for the introduction of evidence, I have the code book, the design guidelines, and then the staff reports that you've been provided with and the materials. Okay. Does anyone want to make a motion? I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion. Okay. Casey. I second it. All right. All who say aye. 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 Okay, old business. I have none. Okay, we have no old business, so moving on to new business. SGHC 007-19 to receive a certificate of appropriateness to rehab and renovate, including installation of vinyl windows, aluminum gutters, vinyl railing on the porch, glass screen doors, a decorative stone retaining wall in the front yard, stone veneer panels on the facade, concrete block area, and an addition of a deck on the rear of the structure at 229 Roberts Street. Uh, I've sent out to you and you have in front of you the staff reports and the materials that were provided uh, as far as the building material. Anybody wish to speak? Yes. Thank you folks for the opportunity. Um, if you review the material, I guess, we, where do we want to start on a particular item? You tell us who you are. Okay, David Gregitis. Uh, my wife and I purchased 229 Robert Street uh, about a month ago. Okay. It's a project that's very necessary. We want to <laughs> end up approving this, but it is complicated. And I think what we should do is go through the steps that are included here one by one. Okay. And work them out. Very good. Okay, so do we want to start on installation of windows? That's Certainly, yes. We've proposed um, we would like to replace the existing windows with new vinyl windows, if that would be acceptable. How many windows are you talking about? Uh, there would be a total of probably about eight. Right, that's what I was going to say. Eight windows. Yeah. There's only one window on the front of the home, and then there would be. Um, would it be the same design as the windows there? Yeah. It would be a similar design, yeah. if not. The same red pattern. Right. Yes. Yeah. What are the windows now? There's one over one. Yeah. I mean, single thing. Yes, yes. With replacement of windows, it's always a little bit of a problem. Generally, the installation of vinyl windows is reluctantly accepted, but if they do not involve the alteration of the structure to install a window are they the same size we will we will in? have them custom made to fit the existing uh, they'll fit in the existing openings. yes sir yes. and um, 
normally what people recommend, or what the guidelines recommend is storm windows in place of, instead of replacing, but do you consider that and our, our preference, if it is accepted, would be to replace them for the uh, efficiency of the windows in the fact that the windows would be more functional than the existing windows that are... Well, from the standpoint of efficiency, you get just about the same thing out of storm the window, but if the windows are in bad shape mm -hmm. so that they can't be repaired, it would take quite a bit of work to be able to make the windows functional as far as being able to open and close them safely. There's also... Well, here, step up here with me if you're going to... They're, they're so old that there could be asbestos in some of the caulking, which we're afraid of. We don't really want that to be in our building either. In the what? In the spackling. In the spackling. Yeah. Okay. Possibly. So we'd like more efficiency along with just the safety issue <clears throat> and maintenance of, yeah. Okay, so it isn't a matter of, we put in without same size to the structure. Yes, right? yeah. Yes, I think. We'll wait till the end and see what we come up with. Exciting. I think we should just get over it. So. I miss it. Well, let's, I, let's do one at a time so we can move on from thing to thing. That'd be good. Okay. Okay, so does anyone want to make a motion on the windows? I make a motion to approve the windows. All who say aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you very much. Yep. Okay, next we have aluminum gutters. And I assume that's for better. This would actually just be a replacement of the existing gutters, but they would be aluminum, so we thought we'd just bring that before the right. committee. It, it's not alterating, uh, no alteration to the existing. They just need to be replaced and and so we just wanted to bring that up that we okay. didn't want to do anything that was right. uh, same design, uh, same. same configuration. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So just replacement. Right. Yes. Does anyone have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the replacement of the gutters. Okay. With aluminum gutters of the same configuration. Yes, sir. Thank you. All who say aye. 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 Next, a vinyl ra railing on the porch. Again, we're not real sure. I gave David two different styles. I'm not sure if we wanted to go with the iron or the vinyl that looks like iron or what exactly we wanted to do. We wanted to do something very basic that, but the, the, even if we went with the vinyl, like I said, it looks like an iron. So from the road, you can't tell that it's even vinyl if we would choose to use that the existing rail is uh, it's falling in apart. very poor condition yeah. and it isn't yeah. the highest quality to right. begin with so it, the removal of the existing and replacing it even with a vinyl or if we had to do the the wrought iron style um, would be a great improvement and would not in any way change the uh, integrity of the existing um, wrought iron that's there in the original application, it was a vinyl railing, but Mrs. Right. Uh, Shelley did submit two right. options on the railing, and it would be um, uh, up to code if there was a railing there also. Right. The front porch, is that, is what's there now, is that original to the structure? 
We're not certain. Yeah. Uh, I can't imagine we, right, no, no. I mean, from yeah. David Bova's investigation, he determined the home was built in, in or about 1950. I don't believe that the uh, existing wrought iron is from that time period. It, it looks like it would have been maybe from the 70s, it would have been upgraded, but it's hard to tell. It's yeah. It's certainly not high quality wrought iron. And a lot it? of it's missing. Uh, you know, there's posts, but there's not a rail. It is literally some of it, some of it is taped together yeah. with electrical <laughs> black tape to match the paint. So it's, it's, it's bad. The yeah, way it is. It is. Yeah. If it were original, there might be an argument for keeping it. Right. Uh, I don't think there's an argument for keeping it. The only discussion would be what material do you use? Wood or sure. wire? Sure. Right. Right. And we haven't come to that I conclusion. Prefer, I prefer wood, but a lot of people I, don't, and I don't think the guidelines are possible. Well, and, and wood, wood is a possibility as well, but we would keep it, Brad, our, our contractor even mentioned using like a treated wood. Um, I, I'm not, we're not sure. We haven't, you know, it's one of those things where we haven't decided on. But again, the vinyl, looks just like iron. Can you see on that picture? I mean, it's hard to tell which is which. Um, they and I, do initially, so. but over the years, and it, this is a general statement, which is not always true, sure. but when people go to take an older house and remodel it, they generally like to go with the newest products on the market. Right. Which works for a while. But then the newer the products usually last a few years, and then what's wrong with them is discovered. They're no longer usable. There's no longer replacements for them, and they end up uh, with a mess. Sure. But I don't <coughs> think there's any prohibition against the vinyl. So, uh, yeah, I think it's the owner's. I think it's the owner's uh, choice. There's nothing in the design guidelines about railing. Right. Okay. So let me, so the quote, so wood or vinyl replacement would be acceptable along with the wrought iron or are there issues with any of the three products and do we need to make that decision tonight what we're going to replace it with if all of them are acceptable do we need that approval for one of the three tonight or all or are all three of them acceptable uh, i'm not sure i understand the question but if you want to replace the i think if you're going to replace any of it you have to replace it all sure yes to yes be, to be compatible definitely yes. right and right the rod iron that you have now is got somewhat of a disaster yeah i think what they're asking is be given the option to choose between the three. What they'll put up, whether it be wood, vinyl, or wrought iron. Again, they're just asking for us to let them have that choice. The vinyl, the picture of the vinyl they submitted, I, I think could be acceptable. There's some vinyl that would not be. And I would agree. I would agree as well. We we really do love the design of this little house, and we're we're not ever going to do anything quirky or uh, over the top artsy we we like to stick with the real traditional look of this little house we love this little house um and yeah so really the wood are the two designs that we That's what I was gonna say. have they will stick to the two submitted or yes wood. okay yes right yes exactly well we're gonna make Reserve the emotions. Yeah. I have a really quick question. If you guys go with the vinyl, are you going to go with the vinyl pillars as well? Like yes. With the picture? Okay. Yes. Yeah. We were actually making motions one at a time. So if you want to go ahead and make a motion concerning the railing, we can. I make a motion with the railing. As submitted materials or wood. Okay. And, and okay. All who say aye. 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 Thank you. 
<laughs> Next onto the glass screen doors. Do you mean a, a full? Yes, our intention would be to put a full glass door so that through the full glass door you would be able to see the existing wood doors that have character. Uh, it wouldn't be a half door, it would be just the, it would, the frame of the glass door would just frame the door frame and the rest of it would be open glass. Yeah. Unlike what's there now. And the original wood doors are staying. That's the intention, yes. Screen door or the glass door door. What is the material of the uh, the frame of the door? door? Itself, yeah. The door itself will be aluminum in aluminum with, with in a very narrow border, and then the, it's just full mostly glass. Mostly glass. Yeah. Well, the glass door itself has aluminum. No, the color will be um, most likely white or whatever trim color we decide to trim the windows in. Okay. It'll match consistently. Like a good idea to me. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. Thank you. All who say aye. 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 Then we have a decorative stone retaining wall in the front yard. You have some specific pictures of retaining wall, which is slowly deteriorating. I, one of the pictures is of a large piece that is severely deteriorated already. Yeah. And when you say that, what do you have Well, I, did I put a, a stone example? Didn't I put a little landscaping stone example in there? I thought I had. No, that's okay. No, that's okay. I and I could be losing my mind too. Okay, that's a real basic one, um, but that would be something we would might do, or we considered just maybe reconcreting what's already there. What are we discussing now? The it's decorative stone retaining wall. On on that replacing the concrete with decorative stone. You wanna, that, it might show it on the front of the house. I'm not sure. Just on the structure or at the sidewalk? This this there. this along the sidewalk. Okay. Because <laughs> you are replacing both there and up under the porch. No, we considered up above the porch. That's yeah, the, the integrity of that material was still good. We considered doing a veneer, stone veneer mm -hmm. on that, or brick veneer on that. I think that would be hard to repair. And it might, yeah. We kind of needed to look at that a little further and even figure out what we could do. And once again, similar to the railing, we're also kind of looking for options as far as what would be acceptable in as we determine the cost to re either replace the concrete or to be able to use retaining wall block material to um, give the home the appearance that it deserves and, and it needs something yeah <laughs> what you're proposing I hate to read something that says stone, which isn't stone, it's, it's concrete, it's cement or Right, well that, and that's what's there now. Yeah. yeah. look like stone, but. Right. And it's strange, in a county of St. Genevieve, where most of our livelihood is stone, <laughs> we never use it, we're always looking for some cheap substitute. So true, so true. <laughs> but you have to do something with what you have there because it's not acceptable the way it is. Well, and as you look at the top picture on the page that you have, to the, on that top picture to the right, you can see where that retaining wall is giving way and falling off to the right mm -hmm. in that picture. And that concrete well, yeah, wall will need to be... And, uh, yes. 
in the streets of that inspection. And the, the property line is so tight on that right hand side that that Bad. is literally overhanging onto the neighbor's yard, which is a negotiation that we're going to have to determine how we're going to correct that moving forward. Um, but once again, that would be either a concrete retaining wall or a block wall on that side as well to hold back the the earth there along the the right hand side of the home that also you want to go ahead and talk about tonight that uh, can we or you can uh, it's the same as the retaining wall on the basically front. it is yes right now it is mm -hmm. uh, but you're talking about the that be the it would be the east east side, of, east side the of the home, the right hand I think side you of the picture. Have a picture of how it's leaning already, um, and then just to clarify, you're talking about replacing it either with landscape stone or or trying to repair or trying to repair the, the wall concrete. that's already there. Okay. I feel like the concrete would be more appropriate to the time period. Um, because like like we were talking about the the concrete is just get got the stone look and not of of the time period of the house. Okay. I feel like it would change it too much. This would look like something to do with your second vision. I make a motion to approve because it looks, when we place it to look like what's there, the concrete. Concrete. All who say aye? Aye. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, the in, in, excuse me, I'm yeah. sorry. And that would be on both the front of the home and on the side? Is yes. that, I just wanted to be sure I understood. Very good, thank, thank you very much. Next would be stone veneer panels on the facade, concrete block area. I guess on the front porch. Yes, yeah, where the concrete blocks are exposed. <laughs> And I believe I there's a picture of the type of panel that I had in mind. It would be this page here. And then there's also some specs on it from one of a local or a uh, manufacturer later in the packet. It's a veneer. And just for clarification, that is a stone veneer, not a vinyl or a plastic material. It is actually a thin stone veneer. Thank you. Okay, the, the last thing listed here is an addition of a deck to the rear of the structure. In reality, it would be more of a small uh, landing coming out. We're going to put an, uh, a door that comes off the back of the home and, would, and steps coming down would be more of a landing than a deck. It's not going to be a raised deck. It would be a ground level. That is correct. So that you have a surface to step on instead of right. just stepping in onto yeah. the ground. And 
I'm just bringing that up. Yeah, I'll bring, I'll bring what that mat- up. What material would the deck be made out of? Wood. Wood? Yes. Any more discussion? Uh, I thought I had seen somewhere in this discussion a mention of vinyl siding. <laughs> we, yes. Yeah, we were going to say that. Yes, we were going to bring that <laughs> yeah. back up. We must have passed it. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Is that? It's still. We haven't talked about that yeah. yet. Okay. We have a motion and a second on the what we're calling a landing. There you go. Okay, I'm sorry for about that. Um, sorry. All who say aye. 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 Okay. But it is proposed vinyl siding. Okay. If I didn't type in there, that's my fault. And there's a picture of that yes. as well. Okay, so the last thing I believe we need to discuss is the vinyl siding. Well, as I understand the proposal, the new siding is to be placed over the old siding, the old vinyl siding. That's correct, right? It doesn't have existing vinyl siding. Right. It has the uh, asbestos uh, shingles. Yeah, right. Well, I think the guidelines say you don't put a replacement over a replacement. It, you take the replacement off. You take the original off, repair what's underneath it, and preferably use the wood siding. But if you don't, but you don't put nail vinyl siding through the asbestos siding. Maybe I can help clarify that. Brad Fisher, Shelley's brother, I'll be doing some of the work. The uh, the original siding, which would be the asbestos or cement tile, would have, in this case, just put over a basic one by material, a pine three quarter inch board. It wasn't a finished wood siding. So this would have been the original siding, this asbestos tile. Uh, so if you were to pull it off, you'd have bare ply, uh, pat pine one by twelves, and uh, with tar paper over it. So typically, how we would cover that up, you'd use a foam board over that as a leveler, leave the siding on, because uh, if it is asbestos, then you'd have to have the guys with the little white suits on to come take it off for you. This way, you encapsulate it with a with a um, a thin layer of foam and put the vinyl siding over it. And for some reason, over the years, the front wall, the porch wall, had been replaced with just a, a cheap wooden, almost like a reverse board and bat, and, and it's in, in bad shape also. But um, other than that, that's typically why we wouldn't take off the cement tile or the asbestos tile. But you're replacing it because it's deteriorated or because of the appearance? A lot of the edges are broken and you can buy a replacement but they don't always fit exact and it, it would be, you know, where do you stop? There's, you know, they're scattered all over. It's not like one row. They're, they're just scattered everywhere. Well, my, like the basic concern is you're, you have a failed siding which probably has some damage to the structure. And instead of finding out and fixing it, you're covering it up again. Well, I mean, if there's any real questionable areas, we can pull that off and see. We'll be able to see from the inside when we take the plaster off if that same wood is, is deteriorated also. So, I mean, there's a couple chances we'll have to, to determine if it's damaged. If it is, we'll repair it, level it back out with the other existing siding, and then cover it. Uh, yeah, we wouldn't just cover up a, a rotten board. Our plan is to use quality materials to make this a nice home again and not cut corners by hiding uh, any deficiencies in the structural integrity of the building. We, we, we bought this home to redo it and make it a nice piece of property that we plan on keeping for a, a, a period a, a long period of time. I, I, I appreciate what you're doing. So, and, and, I, and I just wanted to be clear, we're not, we're not trying to just do a, a quick flip on this. We're not trying to just make it uh, livable to be able to rent it real quick. That's not our interest. Our interest is to, is to make this a nice little home again. And my, my questions are not to impede you. They're mm-hmm. to 
Absolutely. Make sure that yeah. when you get done, you've got a good serviceable serviceable right. building. Sure. And we appreciate and that. And it really concerns me when you mm. take a failed siding and instead of really investigating and finding out why it's failed, yeah. uh, you're going ahead and just basically hiding it. Right. And it's not that it's not that the whole, the whole siding the package itself has failed it's a lot of the broken edges which would have another siding behind it the way they overlap so i don't think there's water damage but like i say we won't take any chances if if we see it on the inside or uh you know you'll be able to tell um, and quite honestly i think it's just old you know it's so old that it's just lived its prime yeah pretty you know brittle. just brittle yeah I make a motion that we That's okay. old as a strange topic to bring up to the town that is. It's all relative. Whose right. goal is right. to preserve its, its, its old structures. There you yeah. go. Fred, have you done this kind of work before? Uh, hundreds of them, yes. And look for the deterioration behind? Absolutely. And if you were, if you were uh, nailing or fastening the foam board over it, you would immediately find out there's nothing back there, obviously. Uh, but typically we'll look around the windows first and see if there was any leakage there. That would be the hardest or the worst spot. Um, but it's just such a nuisance when all those little edges get broken, whether it's a baseball hitting it or whatever. Um, it's hard to, to take them out because the nails are hidden and you end up breaking the next tile up trying to replace the one below and it just it keeps going and going. It's, it, Hard to stop. <laughs> you stop. And as Brad stated, we're literally in the process of tearing the plaster off back to the studs where the exterior walls are exposed from the inside and it'll be anything that needs to be replaced will be replaced and it's going to be insulated, re-insulated all the way through top to bottom. The, uh, bear with me, I'm trying, I don't mm -hmm. want to butcher the Gregitis. Yes. The Gregitis has already applied for a building permit for the interior. They're adding a uh, bathroom. Yes. Revamping a uh, bedroom, kitchen area, um, replacing the roof with in-kind material, and tuck pointing a lot of brickwork that really needed it. Roof has already been replaced. Tuck pointers coming after the first of the year, so we're moving ahead with all those improvements. Did I hear that someone made a motion? Okay. I'll second it. All who say aye. 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 No. I believe that's it. Do you guys have any more issues or concerns? No, we do not. Thank you very much for your time, and we appreciate the vote of confidence. I think you'll all be pleased with the results. Come by and see it one time. Yeah, maybe we'll have an open house after one year. Thank you very much. Have a Merry Christmas, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next is SGHC 00819 to receive a certificate of appropriateness to install carports in the rear side yard at 291 and 295 Lehe. Is there anyone here to discuss this? I'm here. Come on up, please. <laughs> I'm not. I didn't know I was going to discuss this, though. <laughs> Tell us who you are. My name is Sarah Hogue. Hi, Sarah. Hello. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to say. Any questions for Sarah? Well, how about I think you have a picture, I think. Oh, do you? This is the one she's selected right here. It's three-sided. Which one? Uh, is it in your package? Somewhere in that package, I believe. Yeah. This one right here. Ooh. This is 
on 3rd Street, directly facing 3rd Street. It, it's behind... I get... ...your building, but you can't get away from 3rd Street because the building's on the corner. The building is on the corner of 3rd and Leahy, yes. What? I, I can understand why you want some cover for your vehicles and... Uh, I don't know how far back, how far back from the curb would this be, this structure be? Dave, help me. From the uh, curb, hold on just a second, I went out and made measurements. It's about six foot off the property line, because there are some zoning restrictions there. It'd probably be in the realm of 11 to 12 foot off of the curb. The sidewalk is pretty wide there. Well, very frankly, I mean, there's been major investments on that street recently to try to improve it. And this metal building you're proposing to install in right across from where somebody spent a great deal of money and effort to improve a structure, and where the whole neighborhood seems to be trying to improve. Uh, I can see the need for carports or some cover for vehicles, but that I think would be absolutely ugly in that location and would detract noticeably from the neighborhood. But that, that's my opinion. Uh, and I don't think I would change it for any reason other than a, a more acceptable appearing building that I'm one person on the board. And I kind of agree with Frank, especially since the one is going to be right next to the sidewalk. That's what you're going to see. The one that's going to sit back a little further, I think would probably be okay. It's not as noticeable, um, especially because it's kind of between the two property lines. but. The one that's right there next to the sidewalk and right at the corner or right along the street. She's restricted in space. I think that's why Sarah and I together talked about what to propose. And one that was a, a double would be too close to the property line. So two singles was what we decided to go forward with. Uh, but uh, Sarah, do you remember talking about the one that would be facing the other Right, direction? right. I think that's what Casey is referring to. Yeah, because on your little picture, it's the one. So you would drive into the alley and almost drive straight into it versus taking a right turn. Yeah, so like when you would drive into the alley and drive straight, that would probably be okay. The one that you drive in and turn, since it's right in, the, like going to go along the sidewalk mm -hmm. and the street, I think with the improvements that have been made downtown and in that area, having a side. What if a, a double board. could fit there? On the side? No, uh, right here. It'd be tight. There's yeah, an easement there also that. for the neighbors to get in. Um, but if you include the sidewalk, there's approximately 20. Let me see here. Well, does the property line for the, this property we're discussing, mm -hmm. does it go far enough to get both of them in? As they sit, it appears that you could park two, but you'd fill up the lot. As they sit on the drawing I provided, is that what you're asking? Is there room for those? Yes. Is there room for a double on what would be the east side of the property? Yeah. I'm not positive. There's I don't 29 think less 12, so there is 17. And we talked the double was what, Sarah, 21? I think 21 by 20. 12 by 21 for a double. If it could be smaller, there's a chance it could fit there. Um, on the aerial view I gave you, this, is, this here is an easement. So this is the property but there's an easement right here that mm -hmm. allows these folks to get to their backyard. So you'd only have this much space to put 
would would that work? If that was if uh, um, maybe. <laughs> I don't, want that I don't know. I'm not sure. I just wanted to ask if I could do anything. Yes. I'm not well, familiar with all this. What this color is third, this is painted? No, I, I'm I just thinking didn't get gray because I think I'm going to have the building theaters. painted okay. so it would Made be pretty much the same color. Paint the camera glad you can't see it. It's all my okay. It was just a. Um, Convenient? What's the word? Like a courtesy? Like to the people? Tenants? The, yes. It was, I was just curious if it was even possible. Does it have to have the sides on it? Or could you just do more of the open? I mean, I, I, well, it's not paid for. I mean, nothing's bought or ordered, so... Um, <laughs> what did she say? I agree with this, not having the sides on it. Um, because it's not obstructing the view and it's actually showing the character of the building but the one uh, the aerial view where they have the the bay at the back of the lot versus the one on the side the back of the lot I think is okay but I don't I think it would disrupt too much of the streetscape on the side okay on third street well I just I was just yeah. curious I just wanted to ask but like I haven't bought or paid for anything, so if it's not well, okay, it's not okay. We should accommodate and work with her to have something, some protection for her car. I'm not saying we approve this, but we should work with her some way on something. Well, there's a protection of the car, but uh, uh, me, I, in this position, feel my job is to protect the historic district. I didn't suggest that. I that. don't think I did that, that does. I didn't suggest that. How do you feel about wood? Instead of metal. I'm just curious. Yeah. Um, so if it was wood, it would be building a structure. Right? Or right? Even more of a permanent structure. Yes. This is not. I'm just asking. No, I, I'm me too. <laughs> but that would, that is what that, I'm not against, I, like I said, I just had the idea or the thought of a carport and just wanted to see if it was possible. If it's, if it's not, it's not. I totally understand. Where does the easement go through? Back here. Yes. So this is her well, I understand the concern for protecting the vehicles. Right. I, and I, I, just I really do. Was but just I just curious. think there must be a more attractive and compatible structure with, with the historic district that we're trying to bring back, and which there's been some real money spent there in trying to do it, some real effort. And I think the, it is going to be much better. But I don't think this type of structure improve, improves the appearance of it. I understand your yep. point or idea. Anyone ready to make a motion? So it's. I want to table it and see if we can fit a double. Uh, um, that's up to you, but that doesn't mean it'll be approved. Right. No. So it's so it's just like right now it's no. And if I decide to try something else down the well, road, no one's made a motion at this point, so okay. it's kind of dying for lack of a motion. <laughs> okay, but I mean that's basically a I no. I make the motion to table it. Okay. And y'all go measure to see if the double will fit to the back part. Okay. If where it's not going to be on the street. If you build a double, I mean. Obviously, the metal ones are kind of prefab, and that's what you get. If you decide to go with wood, could we 
make it work for a double maybe. Okay. Um, so you know, then there's a little bit of wiggle room here or there. I mean, depending on measurements. Okay. This would be up to the owner, but we can come back so, with another option if you want. So this idea is a no, which is I totally I just want to understand. I'm not upset. This idea is a no, but my second option would be to actually build a double car garage. Is that what you're saying? But then that'd be a whole nother. It could be a double carport if it was wood. It wouldn't have to be a garage. Okay. At the back of the property. Okay. Yeah. Not along the Like street. more straight in? On the east side. It's kind of where Dave Pink used to work. Okay. Well, no, I'm gay. I mean, this is just the beginning of my pro It was just an idea. <laughs> no, you're fine. You're fine. Okay. Good. So I'll just see what we come up with next. If I have another idea, I'll come back. Okay, Does that work? Yep. Thank you okay. for your time. Thank you. Uh, uh, table. Is there a second? I'll second it. All who say aye to table. Aye. 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 Unfortunately, I made another enemy. <laughs> no. Frank, I agree with I you. I think she was okay. She just wanted to know what she could do. She was. She was just trying to get an idea. Okay, so um, next we have administrative approvals. Uh, there were quite a few the past month. There was a certificate of appropriateness to install a Hainwood sign at 195 Market. There was a new shop that went in there. I believe three little Indian girls. Mm -hmm. um, and then we had several attestation to uh, do some ordinary maintenance and repair. One at uh, 199 South Main. Walk through these here. And it's Which been was done. Patterson. It's been done. <laughs> uh, one at uh, 229 Roberts, which were the Regaitises who were just here for tuck pointing and roof replacement. One at 161 North Main. That has not begun yet, but the porch is being completely replaced. But it is the exact same porch. I don't want to say completely replaced, but the materials that are uh, decaying are being replaced. And then the last one, um, an attestation for a replacement, uh, I'm sorry, for installing windows and window covering, which would be at 40 North 4th. That's the back side of Valley School. They replaced all their windows this summer and now they're going to do the exact same thing on the back of the building uh, in the coming year okay so next we're on to other business the presentation by the secretary of the interior historic preservation standards we have dr hoffman here from southeast missouri university thanks for coming uh, well thank you for um, inviting me and um have um, I have a presentation uh, for you, and um, uh, do you think? No, she's going to get someone. Oh, <laughs> she invited me. And she <laughs> Let's see. Hi. So I'm not sure what we're doing. Somewhere, anywhere. Yeah. What about take somebody else's? That's not. That's not see though. And um, <laughs> um, I apologize. I didn't make enough um, handouts for everybody. Um, I asked Donnie, Donnie, Donna, um, how many, and she said six. Well, I didn't know. So I can make that's, copies. That's no copiers. He can send it to me. And then email too. I don't need that. And I can send. Um, yeah, I'm happy to to share. Um, you can copy me. I uh, just start saying, you can copy yours, Donna, to me, but that's okay. Send me one. If it sends it to me, and you send me I'll one. send it to you. Okay. Okay, well, I have okay, one. Can you see it? it my we can, we can see, see it. It's fine. Right. Right. Who, who, who did, who did? I guess you can see it. I do, but I don't want to take it from somebody. Here you go. We're going to fight over who takes it. Okay. <laughs> He's just going to email me one tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to take notes and then I can take notes. Okay. Take notes too. Um, 
Well, thank you for inviting me, and I'm Stephen Hoffman. Uh, I'm uh, the coordinator of the Historic Preservation Program at Southeast Missouri State University. And so I've been in conversation with Donna about uh, doing a, a training um, for the Historic Preservation Commission, um, which I guess is the Heritage, St. Genevieve Heritage Commission. Um, so um, hopefully I'll, I'll continue to get that right, and apologies if, um, if I don't. Um, uh, we talked about, um, and I'm just going to get some water, that a good, um, uh, a good training would be to talk about the Secretary of Interior standards um, and really how to, how to apply them in design review. And I have to say, it was really, um, I don't know, I'm going to say fun um, for me to sit in the audience and kind of watch this process and, and have you kind of go through the, the deliberation for the uh, certificates of appropriateness. And, and so I, I really appreciated that opportunity to kind of watch you all in action. And, and I thought that you um, did a nice job. And, and again, it's a hard, I, I think people um, don't understand um, the balancing act that you have to fight to preserve the historic look and feel of a, of a district. And yet you're working with real people who have real lives and homes and, um, and things like that. So, um, so kudos, uh, kudos to you. So I have a presentation, um, and, but I'm more concerned that I help you with uh, questions that you have. So if at any point you say, that's great, but we don't really want to talk about that. We want to talk about this or, um, you know, interrupt me at, at, any, at any point because really it is um, more about you um, than about me. But um, I thought a good place to start would be to talk about the Secretary of Interior Standards. And um, these really are sort of the, um, the philosophical underpinnings of almost everything that we do in preservation. And um, there are um, great resources online, and th this is a, a link to the, um, to the website that, that has it. Um, for those of you who are more old school, um, you know, they do have it in book form as well. Uh, the pictures aren't as up to date, but um, kind of goes through what the standards are, um, and then has some um, like recommended, not recommended kinds of, of treatments, and um, and they keep updating it, and you know, so you can get these, um, but mostly, like so much of the world, they're they're trying to push it to the to the online stuff. But but these are great resources. What are the dates on those two books? This book is 2017, um, uh, which I don't have a picture of. The book I do have a picture of. The date is 1992, so, <laughs> so you can see why they shifted to the online, but they would still sell this, um, but they've come out with kind of a, a newer mm -hmm. version. But the online is really easy to use, and I think that it's something that, um, that you could also you know, refer people to, because the, the nice thing about it is that it does get into the recommended and not recommended uh, treatments that, that are sort of based on the, the standards um, <coughs> themselves. Um, and the standards uh, which you have, and, and I know you can't um, uh, read the little fine print um, <laughs> up there, but it's just nice to have it as an example, but I did print out um, uh, one, and I printed out more than six of these because I printed them out before I asked Donna. This, so I, I printed out like everything you know, is your fault. So, uh, um, well, that was collaboration. So, um, and uh, uh, so these are the these are the standards, and and really, um, they're they're really broad, um, generalized kinds of of. Um, uh, perspectives on how we should um, treat uh, historic properties that we want to, to rehabilitate. So, in terms of, um, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> I, I wasn't expecting that. Um, oh, you made extra coffee. That's I did. Great. Thank you so much. Um, that one, uh, so, <clears throat> the Secretary of Interior has standards for preservation restoration, reconstruction, and rehabilitation, right? And we're focusing on the standards for rehabilitation. Is everybody um, like familiar with and understand like what rehabilitation, what, what that means as opposed to restoration or 
preservation? Not me. Okay, good. I like when a brave soul says, <laughs> you know what, I'm not really, I'm not really sure. I'm not. Um, does anybody want to help like take a stab at it? Because I do want to try to keep you awake by engaging you and interacting with you. And, so and restoration versus uh, rehabilitation. Uh, rehabilitation is really what, is what we're after. Because a lot of times some of these terms, they, they, get, um, they get mixed up. And I think the general public, when they hear preservation, um, they think restoration. And I wouldn't be surprised if people come in here and they're like, I don't want to have to turn it back to what it was you know when it was original i want you know i want a modern kitchen or right like me i'm a big fan of indoor toilets and i know some of the <laughs> some of the buildings here were like built without them and you know so rehabilitation is putting a building back into service making the changes so that you can use it but doing it doing it in such a way that you retain the character defining features and so for us, it's really all about the character defining features. And, and, you know, Frank earlier said, you know what, if you put that metal building in the yard that you can see it from Third Street, it's going to ruin the character that defines that neighborhood, right? You're thinking about the character defining features. And, and that's really where our focus is. So um, restoration would be um, something that um, that maybe happens at the Amaro house or it happened at the Felix Valley house, right? So it's a rare thing in our world to find a property that's worthy of restoring it and, and taking it back. For most of us, what we want to do is we want to retain the historic character, right? We want to retain the old look and feel of it, but we want to be able to continue to use it in, in the modern world, right? And so that's rehabilitation. And for us, and for you, the battle really is between rehabilitation and then another R word, renovation. You have people who come in and what they want to do is they want to renovate their house, right? Um, they want to replace the windows, put vinyl siding on, right? They, they want to renovate it. Um, and so renovation is when you fix it up, but you don't pay attention to the character defining features, right? Um, and so we're really all about how do we retain those um, character defining features? And the, the standards for rehabilitation help us do that, right? It's a, it's a philosophy that underpins our perspective on really almost all of the, the questions that we face when we try to work with people who want to um, continue to use a historic property in some way. Um, but you know, want it to be modern, but want it to also retain that historic character. And so we have these guidelines. Um, and they're, they're really, um, I think, useful because they are so flexible, right? It's, we like them as preservationists because we can suss what we think we mean, right? Contractors and property owners don't like it because they want to know black or white, yes or no, can I do it, can I not? Is this material appropriate or not? And, and the sort of the it depends answer can be frustrating, but that's the, that's the world we navigate, right? And how do we know what it depends on? Well, really, it's kind of based on these standards. These standards um, really inform uh, or should inform all of our uh, decisions. Uh, Mark Miles, who's the former uh, uh, State Historic Preservation Officer, um, used to say, um, that really this boils down, you can boil all these down to, to three general principles. One, do no harm. Two, less is more. And three, keep it real, right? That, that that's really what we want to do, right? So um, the changes that people are making to their buildings, um, we, we don't want to hurt the historic fabric that's, that's there, right? Um, and the less that they alter, the better off that we are. Um, but there's this desire, and then also this keep it real, the conversation about the, the, um, the, the, the fence um, or the retaining wall, right? Uh, you know, they wouldn't have had that fake stone as a retaining wall back when this house was built. And so if we want to try to 
keep it real to its time period, should probably go back with a cement retaining wall, right? Um, and, and so it kind of uh, fits, fits with that. So, um, so the standards really are this kind of philosophical underpinning. Um, and so we'll, we'll go through them. Um, and uh, even though I'm a professor, there's no test at the end, and it's, you know, I can do eight out of the 10, and so I get a B or anything like that. Um, it's, it's probable that you'll never be in a position where you can just like recite all 10, but if you examine your kind of default responses to questions, you'll discover that they're grounded in the Secretary of Interior standards. I have this discussion with my students all the time in that, um, you know, as they go out into the job market, it's like, remember, you really know these standards. So even though we don't go through them one at a time, you, you pick up the ethos, you, you pick up the, um, the ph philosophy um, as, you go, as you go along. And, and so, um, so let's do that. So the first standard is that a property will be used as it was historically or be given a new use that requires minimal change uh, to its distinctive materials, features, spaces, and spatial relationships. And so, um, again, I know the pictures are small, um, but um, this is in Detroit, and so it's a beautiful theater that's now being used as a parking lot, right? So, um, yeah, it seems, it seems wrong, right? Um, you know, we know, I think, as preservationists, what's the best use for a building? Use the original intended. Yeah, yeah, the, the original use, right? So, best use for a house is to, to, to be a house. The best use for a church is to, to be a church. The best use for a school is to be a school. That's what they were built for. That's not always possible, right? We have to um, uh, adaptively use, right? Adaptively reuse buildings sometimes to, to keep them uh, in service, right? When the, when the school building can no longer be used as a school building, well, maybe we can use it as housing, right? Or, um, but when you think about um, the new uses, you wanna make sure that you have um, a use that's, that's compatible, right? So, and, and partly this gets back to thinking about, you know, what defines the character of a of a space, right? So if you have a if you have a, a church, right? Part of what characterizes that space is the sanctuary space, right? It's just kind of a big open space, and so whatever use goes in there, you would want to keep that open space. You wouldn't want to put a bunch of cubicles in it, right? That would be inappropriate. It would it would detract from the from the character of that. One of the reasons why when school buildings are rehabbed into senior apartments, which is a, a fairly common kind of uh, rehabilitation for those properties, um, they have to keep the hallways wide, right? The developer would like to make those hallways smaller because they get more square footage, okay? But they have to keep them wide because part of the character defining feature of being in a school building is being in that in that wide hallway, right? So you, so you need to find a use that fits with and works with what the building was originally, right? In order to kind of meet these, these standards, right? Um, the historic character of a property will be retained and preserved. The removal of distinctive materials or alteration to feature spaces and spatial relationships that characterize a property will be avoided, right? And, and in a lot of ways, I mean, that just, it just makes sense, right? Um, the, it's the battle that you all face, right? Every month when you get the certificate of appropriateness, um, uh, you know, what changes are going to detract from the character that we shouldn't let go forward, right? Um, and it was an interesting discussion. Um, the cement asbestos tiles Right? How much of a character-defining feature of that style house are, is that kind of siding, right? Um, and now going back with, with vinyl, and again, is that, is that a battle you can fight and win, right? Is, is part of, that, part of that, that judgment, but again, what is it that gives a building its character? Can't be everything, windows, which you brought up before, very 
important, right, in defining the, the, the character. Um, and so um, this is a, um, one of the standards that, that, that you all live and breathe, right, that you really try to figure out, you know, is the proposed change going to affect um, the, the, the character? Um, so that's one that you just you do all, all the time, right? And, and you probably never said to yourself, oh, well, according to Secretary of Interior Standards 2, um, we need to be thinking this, right? It's just part of the, part of the philosophy. Um, three, um, each property will be recognized as a physical record of its time, place, and use. Changes that create a false sense of historical development, such as adding conjectural features or elements from other store properties, will not be undertaken. Um, and this, uh, this slide is from um, uh, Cape Girardeau. Uh, we talked about whether I should come up and take pictures of, say, Genevieve buildings, and Donna said, nah, don't use any of your bad examples from here. Just <laughs> pick, on, pick on people in your own town. So, so, so that's what I'm doing. Um, but, and, and I don't know if you can see it or not, but um, this building, which had been vacant for a long time, was, um, was being rehabbed, everybody's all excited. Um, and they added, and I think everybody knows where Cape Girardeau is, right? Mm -hmm. It's about an hour south of here, it's on the river, it's a river town, and shouldn't a river town, downtown building, have kind of, we'll call them cast iron railings on the, on the windows, right? Because make it look sort of New Orleans-y, right? So all of those window treatments, I mean, that's, that's fake. That's trying to create a sense of history and place that's not authentic to, um, to the building, right? Um, somebody thought that was a good idea. Um, and they didn't have to ask permission to do it, so um, because Cape Girardeau doesn't do as good a job of protecting its historic districts as uh, St. Genevieve does. Um, and, and so we have that. Um, and that's conjectural and fanciful, and, and it's, I think it's a loss of, of historic fabric. So, um, so these kinds of changes, um, or uh, people want to add um, crown molding, you know, they say, oh, they wish their house was fancier, or again, I don't know if you get, you know, French colonial envy, but gosh, I wish I had some vertical logs, I'll just put some in here so I can fit in, and it's like, no, that's not in keeping right with with our philosophy so is the fact that those are removable mitigate the problem um i think that's a great question i think if you're sitting around this table and and you're trying to um negotiate with somebody who really wants to do it and you have to weigh being acute you know having the front page of the paper say that you're anti-progress and that this <laughs> building has been vacant for two decades and somebody's going to do a great thing but you screwed it up because you know, like, yeah, that would mitigate it some. We had that discussion. Yeah. From time to time. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't like it, but you can always put it back. Right, right. Well, and I think that I think that's a, a that's a, a, a legitimate and valid um, uh, uh, um, discussion to have. And I don't know which number it is, but we're gonna we're gonna come to that, right? Um, because no, no, it's great. It's it's. Because really, it's, it's um, on the one hand, these can read to people who aren't immersed in it, like the Ten Commandments, like, oh, these are rules. Well, are the rules, let me follow them. And really, it's more um, like a code of behavior and, and an ethical system. It, it, it's kind of like, um, you know, the Ten Commandments. And I, don't, I mean, I don't know about you, and maybe you can quote them in, in correct order. Um, or, you know, I, I wouldn't, don't ask me to do that, okay? But they're, you know, but I think that the general gist of them, I get, you know, and as a, as a, as a model for behavior, and, and, they're, and they're integrated, right? And, and so I think the, this works the same way. So even though it, it will, will, will find the, the, the quote, right, that we can use to justify the why we let it, so even though it violates three, it's in keeping with, um, uh, where is it, 10. Therefore, we'll, we'll live with it. Um, did you get one of these? You're out of the room. Yeah, yeah, so. Um, good, 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 good question. Does, does this make sense? Does this, um, 
changes to a property that have acquired historical significance in their own right will be retained and preserved. This is often a hard one, particularly when you're working with people who think that historic preservation is all about going back to what it was originally. And, um, and it's like, well, no, you know, th this, um, this building probably, um, I would guess 1890s maybe, to, to 1910, somewhere in there, with the, it's got the really nice pressed metal cornice line. Well, then in the um, uh, mid 20s, so they they put in this this great um, uh, uh, structural glass uh, vitrolite storefront, right? Um, and so if we took that back to its original, we would lose that, right? And and part of part of our theory of preservation is that. Um, is that these buildings tell the story over time, and, and that their whole story is, is important, not just their not just their their birth story, right? But the the story that, that they lived, um, and sometimes you have um, competing values with that, right? In terms of um, I don't know if anybody's ever heard of a guy by the name of Paul Revere, um, <laughs> but he had a house in in Boston, right? And and the, um, the folks who were doing the restoration had to decide, well, we bought it because it's Paul Revere, do we take it back to have it look like it did when Paul Revere lived here? Or, since it also happened to be the oldest frame house in Boston, should they go all the way back to its original um, sort of English post-medieval um, uh, Kirk Boot house, right? Nobody knows Kirk Boot. Um, well, um, which was the right decision? Again, it, it's there's there's um, either one of those uh, could have been legitimate. So, so there might be a story that you would want to take away, right? Some of the evidence of this more recent um, uh, uh, history, but um, but our philosophy is don't do it unless you really have to, right? Um, because it's the record of of time, right? So, so we want to keep it. Um, yeah, that's true, but that's a structure that has been changed and someone wants to work on it. Mm -hmm. It's the argument about taking it back or not. But our concern primarily is where this building has survived and it's that now it's a period that something has to be done. Right. We recognize that there has to be there has to be work done on the structure. Right. But should that effort attempt to keep it as a historic district, should they attempt to keep it looking the same, or should and structurally the same, or should we allow them to go off on the current fad? It's a great question, and I would I would say, and the great answer is always like it depends. But but as you uh, elo eloquently stated before, your job is to protect the look and feel of the historic district, and so without looking at the specifics of a given situation, I would say the default answer would be in keeping with the Secretary of Interior guidelines that you would not have them go off on the latest fad, but you would um, uh, try to keep them uh, as close to um, a process that preserves as much of the historic fabric, as much of the historic design um, as is feasible given financial constraints and materials available. And political, you just there's political. Put the magic word in, financial concerns. Uh, you know, it's, your, it's, your other arguments go right down the tubes. It's, you know, it's a balancing act. And, and I think part of what you can do is, as a commission, is, is um, be sensitive to that. And I heard that a lot from the, from the, Commission tonight is that you understand people's concerns and you know and and so you're not just like no I don't like metal buildings so no I mean that there was that never it didn't come across that way at, at all 
um, and, and so I think that's positive, but, but I think it's also, uh, um, uh, there, there is a financial benefit to keeping the historic character of the historic district. It's, it's, a, it's harder to quantify, but I, I, I think there's a general sentiment that the nat one of the reasons that the National Park Service has a national park, it's in the process of having a national park, whatever, however you say, wherever we are with that, um, one of the reasons that that's happening is not just because of the buildings that they are acquiring, but because of the larger um, uh, collection of French colonial buildings that, that exist. I, I, I think if, if, it were, if it were the uh, Amaro house in a Walmart parking lot, that they would not be interested. Um, so, so yeah, so how do you make that argument? Right, that, and, and you, you and the commission, I think, um, we're trying to articulate that to the, to the young woman with the metal carport, that there's a value on this street, right, that you can't see, that maybe, um, but that you would negatively affect if you don't put more money into a structure that, um, uh, that will be more in keeping with the historic district. Yeah, one of the biggest problems we have is, 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 is our staff is most people consider the individual structure. They forget or don't want to remember that it is a historic district. Mm -hmm. And the overall appearance as you drive into the historic district is what you get, mm -hmm. not a couple of individual houses surrounded right. by. Right. It's a it's a it's a it's a challenge and a and a balancing act. Um, so and this one I think in terms of uh, changes to a property acquiring historic significance I think is is often related more to commercial buildings than than necessarily residential mm -hmm. ones. Al although certainly um, we see changes to residential buildings over over time as as well. Um, the fifth one, distinctive materials, features, finishes, and construction techniques or examples of craftsmanship that characterize a property will be preserved, right? So that's the, you know, what is it about this property that really makes it what it is? What are those character-defining features? And those are the things that you need to retain. The other stuff, you can, you can let go, right? So, um, and I know you're doing external um, uh, review, right? And in the course of the discussion, you know, we hear like, ah, I'm, you know, tearing out all the plaster and exposing the walls from the inside. And nobody, nobody flinched or, you know, anything like that, uh, which is, which is fine. Um, and uh, certainly if it's, again, it's inside and, you know, but, you know, part of that is, is, is that really what gives it its character, the, the plaster on the inside? Does it matter whether that's, replaced or not? Probably not. I mean, it's probably more important, you know, that the, that the windows have the same uh, fenestration pattern, that the, you know, that the, that the roof um, size and shape and all, you know, that it all, it kind of fits in. I mean, that's probably what gives it its character is more important, right? So, so part of what you have to do is kind of that assessment of what are the distinctive characteristics of it, and those are the ones that we need to, to focus on. Um, this gets back to your earlier comment. Deter deteriorated historic features will be repaired rather than replaced, where the severity of deterioration requires replacement of a distinctive feature. A new feature will match the old in design, color, texture, and where possible materials. Replacement of missing features will be substantiated by documentary and physical evidence, right? So again, National Park Service for a tax credit project, they can lean on people. You, you know, you're like, how bad are the windows? Are you sure you have to replace them? Maybe, you know, and you have to be a little more gentle, right? Because um, uh, you don't have that big carrot of, of tax credits, right? You're just the stick um, of, of yes or no. Um, but, but you all were negotiating that with, right? Oh, if you have to do that, think about what the materials are, right? Those kinds of, of things. Well, I think we're back to finances too. Yeah. I mean, let it sit there and rot, or let them try to fix it and save it. That yeah. is kind of one of the arguments I work with. And, 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 and then also the, you know, truly what is it 
that gives it its character, right? So in an ideal world with money without an issue, those would be wood replacement windows, right? But we know money is an issue. And so can you really tell from the street whether they're vinyl or whether they're wood? Um, well, if their profiles are the same and the fenestration is the same, maybe not, right? Some of those imitated materials have been getting better and better, right, um, uh, than when they, when they first came out. Um, but this, you didn't need me to come in to say, oh, guess what, you should repair rather than replace. And if you have to replace, you should try to replace with like kind. If not in materials, then certainly in the look and feel, right? And that's, um, you, you all were evidencing that before, and none of you said, according to Secretary of Interior Guideline 6, you should really, right? But it's, it's part of your preservation philosophy. You, you just, you, you live in, and breathe it. And, and if you wondered where that came from, this is where it came from, right? It informs uh, what, what we do. Um, if they came in and said, hey, I, wanna, I got a brick building and I want to sandblast it, what would you say? Oh, no. No, bro, what, right? Because that's guideline number seven is, is don't use a destructive, uh, technique when you, um, uh, when you, when you do that. Um, I thought this was, was really interesting because I, well, I mean, this has been here. Basically, they say, don't forget what's under the ground. Don't forget archaeology. Um, and, um, and I was really impressed with, one of the things I did in preparation for coming here was to look at your, um, your guiding documents, kind of look at the code and look at your, um, uh, your design guidelines, and, and you include archaeology in it, which I, I thought was good for you, good for you. So you've got some really great resources here. Um, this one, new additions, exterior alterations, or related new construction will not destroy historic materials features and spatial relationships that characterize the property. The new work will be differentiated from the old and will be compatible with historic materials, features, size, scale, and proportion and massing to protect the integrity of the property and its environment, right? So this is a good example. This is the um, Marquette Hotel in Cape Girardeau, and it was um, added on to, and you can kind of see um, here, they added on this kind of stair tower, right? Um, and you can tell that's, that's an addition, right? And, and, it, and it, could be, um, it could be removed. And when you look at the building from the, from the street, right, you don't really notice that, that addition. You can kind of see it's the stair tower and then it wraps around a little in, in the back, right? That, that new stuff is, is fairly well hidden. Um, these are bad examples, right? <laughs> they, church needed a little more space and so they stuck this wart-like thing on the, on the front of it, right? Um, could have been done in a, in a better way, right, in terms of um, having it be more compatible. Or this church here um, added um, living space in the back, converted to, to private use. And, and it's just out of scale and it doesn't fit, and, right? It's, it's just, um, it's, it's an inappropriate um, uh, addition. Um, and then the last one, we've kind of already talked about this, new additions and adjacent or related new construction will be undertaken in such a manner that if removed in the future, the essential form and integrity of the historic property and its environment would be unimpaired. Um, and so um, this is a, um, there's actually two buildings uh, on campus. They both look like this. So they're two identical buildings. Uh, and the back of one has this entry hall. And you can see that's just kind of stuck on the end. You could remove that and it wouldn't affect the building. Um, and then this one has an elevator uh, that was uh, put on the outside. And again, you could remove that. And so that gets back to the question you asked on that other one of, you know, do we want to fight that battle over the, the iron railings on the windows? If that lets the project go forward and they're committed to that New Orleans look, partly we would want to have a robust discussion and Frank would say, yes, we do not want those, right? And, but we could also fall back on the, well, if we let them put it on and then in 20 years they come off, you know, we still have the building. If we don't let them put it on, and nobody rehabs the building today where we have it in 20 years. And, and those are, those are you know, heavy decisions to, to, to have to make. Um, so um, anything in these standards, stuff you hadn't heard before? Um, or it's in our, it's in our yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Th th yeah, this is actually, this is a photocopy from your standard. So, um, uh, but it's nice, it's nice to have it out, you know, is, is, um, but, um, uh, the beliefs, right, that are articulated by the standards are all things that you've, you've said before, right? I mean, did you know you were quoting standards? <laughs> I did. <laughs> Time's a graduate did, of our did. program, <laughs> right? So, um, but again, the standards are that philosophical underpinning that, that guides us as we, as we make decisions. And, and they're, they're, not, they're not standards like you know, um, in the codes, right, for building standards that can be very specific, right? There's no, like, it depends, right? It's, no, if the fire starts, 12 people have to be able to exit in, you know, one minute or less, you know, and the doorway has to be so wide. I mean, it's very clear, and contractors are used to that, right? Um, and they look at these standards and they're like, does that really mean, you know? And our job is to convince them that it really does mean something um, tangible and concrete, and it's not a personal decision. It's not whether you like that carport or not, right? Your, your, your likes and dislikes have nothing to do with your decision-making process, good right? Good for you. Right? It's, it's, it's all about whether it meets the standards or it doesn't, right? How do you know whether it meets the standards or not? Well, informed by this philosophy, you evaluate whether it um, uh, has a detrimental effect to the character-defining features of the property or the district, right? Um, and that was... You didn't use those words, right? But that's exactly what you, you said. It's like, I understand you want to put your car under a roof, but this is going to detract from the character-defining features of that district. And therefore, you could love it. I love this. But you can't have it. Well, it's, been, it's very important to this particular little community. Mm -hmm. We would be subject to drastic flooding had we not taken a rough stop. There's just a whole lot that the community has uh, obtained because of the historic features. Yes. And, uh, you know, I, if I were building a new house, I'd probably move out in the country somewhere, buy a place, and but I don't. I live in an old 18... Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. It's either 1818 or 1830 or 2034 house. Uh -huh. Beautiful big old place, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't dare do things to the exterior of that house that some people request to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and it's, um, I mean, as we all know, <laughs> not everybody thinks like you. You know, and not everybody thinks like me. And and. And how you know how how do we how do we work with them, right? And and because you have you you have a responsibility, right? You have a responsibility to them as taxpayers and property owners, but you but you also have a responsibility to all the other taxpayers and and, and citizens, and you know I think to the future, right? Because if um, uh, if, if that historic district hadn't been around in as good a shape that it was, would there have been the justification for the flood wall, right? There's some argument that says there maybe was, not, right? That, there was that, not. Uh, they, did, they went through all the right. technical ways of thinking. They right. were worth 13 cents on a dollar. Uh, yeah, and, and so um, the ability to say that these properties are priceless, right, which is why they need to be protected, you know, goes a long way. And, and you have a responsibility to, to, to continue that moving forward. Well, we, we have a written agreement, supposedly, that uh -huh. we will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And lucky you, it comes, 
it comes down to a Monday night at six o'clock, somebody saying, "Hey, I want to do this," and you, you, you know, and, and you have to deal with it. But you have these these standards, which um, I, I think inform um, uh, all of all of what we do, right? That it, it's our it's our our ethic, um, and you know, so I have this like, well, why are they important? And you already know this right that because um, again the they were in your they're in your design guidelines um, but they're specifically referenced by the code um, and they're not only in the guidelines they, they provide the framework for how the guidelines are um, are presented and so I don't expect you to read that but that's but I looked it up and your code actually says um, you know so instead of one through ten it's you know a through J um, but but they're there, right? That, that they say, when, when you consider a certificate of, of appropriateness, um, the commission sh um, shall follow as applicable um, substantive provisions in the design guidelines um, and this, the, the standards, right? So, um, so you have to follow these, right? You, you, you um, like, I want to let you put a metal building there because I understand your human need for sheltering the cars. Uh, but I can't because the, the standards don't allow us to, to, um, to detract from the character defining features of the, of the, uh, of the district, right? Um, uh, and then, um, I really like your, your design guidelines, by the way. I, I, I'd probably seen them before, but uh, but I really looked at them this time, and they're phenomenal. They're really good. I, I don't know. I was going to ask, do you like them? What, I mean, what, I, uh, are they useful? How um, how long has the historic district been in existence? Like historic, the Heritage Commission, in one form or fashion, been in existence? When, when were these adopted? These are. Yeah, yeah, it's, they were amend last amended in 2000. Oh, these were in 2001. Yeah. yeah but it goes back to was, that, Oh, yeah. yeah. The commission was before that. You remember the design guidelines being adopted? I, no, I can't tell you the exact dates. But uh, are you talking about the local ones? Yeah, the local ones. <laughs> I'm, I'm just curious yeah. if anybody sat down with the Department of Interior's recommended design guidelines and actually had a conversation about whether or not they oh, wanted all wife. or some was on that portion of those, <laughs> or whether they just adopted them in mass and stuck them in there. The, you mean no, these, there these ten, or well, or, or, or that, that big document? Um, I, I mean, obviously that was something somebody created. Yes. Uh, so say I'm, I'm making this up. Okay, but I'm probably right. So Saint Genevieve got money either from the city or they probably got a, um, a, a CLG grant to hire a consultant, um, of, I think Nori Winter, um, to uh, come in and prepare these. Yes, we did. And there was a local committee that uh, okay. worked with them. Okay, so there was a deliberation about mm. the contents. Yeah, and, and then and Nori Winter yeah. has probably done hundreds of these, so he's got a, a template, but this yeah. is pretty well tailored to, um, to, to St. Jen, and, and um, I was really pretty Im impressed. Um, uh, it was a long, involved process. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm a newcomer to town. I came in the 1980s. And, but from the day I got here, yeah. there was involvement. Yeah. I immediately was asked, because of my background in engineering right. and work, to sit on a committee that the um, oh, what's the University of Missouri? Mizzou? Yeah, Mizzou. They had a committee um, that come over and work. Stayed here for six months. Oh, they were doing half stuff. Yeah, on. Yeah, back then. And yeah. we, we really, we bypassed Southeast. Unfortunately, we went. We went to <laughs> Mizzou and Columbia. Yeah. And, uh, but they were in here Sorry, constantly. Sorry, before I was there, so it's okay. <laughs> the, the, Habs, the Habs were in here twice. Yeah. And yeah. I was a liaison with them. And, yeah. yeah. Uh, 
it was a very, very involved process. I don't know what I have. And then the core come in. Historic it's, American Building Survey. So it actually, and I probably don't want to go lot, down that rabbit hole. And but, if you go out um, online, a lot of the buildings here. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was started by in the depression. Yeah, that's um, that's the document we have with all the buildings listed. The, the, the drawings and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, no. But but these design guidelines. So the commission has been around in one form or another for a while since that original designation. I forget when that was, but um, but then these were updated in, in 2000. They're very good. I mean, I I think um, uh, I think you should be really really pleased um, with them and. Again, I was curious as to how how helpful they were when you're trying to make these decisions. Because as I look at it, I think these are great. Um, partly, the whole framework is built around the Secretary of Interior standards. You, you have these policy statements, right? That again, this is available. Like the public, sh you know, should be flipping through this and being educating themselves before they come to see you. And I know that happens like one out of ten times, you know. But then you're like, oh, you know, let's look through here. Um, but um, again, you know, your policy statement one, original architectural details should be preserved in place whenever feasible. It's like, does that sound familiar? Like, yeah, we just talked about that. That's Secretary of Interior guidelines, right? Deteriorated architectural details should be repaired rather than replaced. Original details should be replaced in kind. Again, you, you know, they break down these standards and present them in the same way that the National Park Service does right um, but they do it on a local basis for St. Genevieveans um, and and it really I mean it's 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 really cool and it even has the minimized impact on archaeological sites I thought that was, it's for you Don. I thought, this is awesome you know it, it really is uh, very very complete um, and 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 really it all you know um, how when should I stop Okay. And their now seats wear out. When you were <laughs> <in the breath. laughs> okay. Donna knows better than to, than to say yeah, that. Um, um, I, I don't remember really when I started, but it was around seven-ish, right? Yeah. Can you get it done before by eight? Yeah. In Twenty minutes. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I have more than we need in, in, in here. So. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I, I think that one of the things I was hoping to accomplish, we can definitely get done uh, in the next twenty minutes. We'll, we'll shoot for that. Um, so. Um, so really this concept of character defining features and, and being able to really understand it and really understand that's the perspective that you need to bring to all of your work I think is really key because if you, um, because understanding the character defining features of a particular property um, is what allows you to take these philosophical ideas whose answer is always, where the answer to can I do that is always, it depends, right? What does it depend on? Well, it depends on what are we talking about in terms of character defining features, and then we operate within that realm. So if you always look at things with the perspective of, okay, what are the character defining features? Once you have a handle on that, then you can start saying, well, what are the things that they want to do? How does that impact the the character defining features and then discuss it in a way that is consistent with these beliefs that these shared beliefs that, that we have. I've seen in researching other communities guidelines, whether uh -huh. it be New Orleans or whether it be, you know, farming, farming you know, something small, right. something large. Yeah. There are organizations now that apply the standards at different levels. Whereas the five here have to make a decision based on the building, the application right. to the building. Have you seen, or, or are there secretary guidelines that I haven't seen that say, you know, this structure of this significance of this age should get this treatment? Oh, uh, so um, nothing that I could point you to, but by um, partly, or or what I think you're really talking about is. Um, the significance factor. Whether it's contributing or whether it's a landmark. Right, yes. right. And, and so um, the, the problem with that, you know, it's kind of the slippery slope is that, you know, what is, um, um, 
what is the the landmark or you know what's the historic resource that we're protecting is it is it each property or is it the whole okay yes. and and so when you're um, when you're interested in protecting the whole then that means you have to hold the non-contributing properties um, to a similar standard as a um, as a contributing property because because otherwise they could become and this isn't really a word but even more non contributing you know what I mean they, they which which then would detract more from you know the the district because the a district is not merely the collection of individual properties it's 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 the um, you know where the, um, the 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 whole is greater than the sum of the parts, or a um, a necklace of graduated pearls is more valuable than all of those pearls in the, in the bag. You know, um, and so um, so unless you um, so was this like a 1950s building that you were right. a rehab? Yeah, yes. that, that, right. So again, you're like yeah. I drove out from an hour away. I'm sitting in the audience. I'm like, it I mean, French colonial, you know, and you're like, ah, some it, uh, 50s. It's been badly damaged and been sitting there for several years. Yeah, you know, so it's a. Not finances. We're not, you're not writing this down, right? You're not going to, like. <laughs> oh, you're on doc Yeah. Oh. <laughs> now you tell me. Now you tell me. <laughs> oh, good. Well, then I'll be very careful what I say from this point on. But. Um, so, so the sense that um, you can't just say, oh, this is a 1950s house, we don't really care about it, we're colonial French St. Genevieve, we only care about really the old stuff, and yes, they forced us to care about the Germans into the mid-19th century, maybe even the early 20th century, but surely there's got to be a line, and 1950 is after it. Well, um, you can't really do that because you, you're in danger of affecting the whole the whole district, um, and but I think when you when you put that lens on of um, what are the character defining features, right? That you can step back and say, what is it that this property really contributes that we need to preserve? And and so for that property, maybe it's just the the scale and the massing and the setback and the, the fenestration pattern, the doors and the openings, you know what? And whether it's got um, uh, the, the uh, asbestos cement siding or vinyl, that doesn't, really, that doesn't really matter, right, in terms of what it contributes. It really is just, it's just a block, it's just a mass in the larger streetscape. Whereas two streets down, this French vertical log building, well, that contributes, you know, so we need to, you know, in terms of what the character defining features are, we, we, we get a little closer and, and we're a little more concerned. And, and I think that meets that criteria of um, like, what does it depend on, right? Well, what are the character defining yeah. features? What's the contribution? And it allows you some of that wiggle room to say, you know, nobody's coming to St. Genevieve to look at our 1950s houses, right? But they have to not, they also have to fit into a, into a historic landscape, and, and so we need to have some level of control. You could build a brand new building and make it perfectly compatible Absolutely. without copying a, a right. historic building. That's right. No, that, that's exactly right. And we're, we're going we're gonna to get to just, that's where I want to go. Is if, if you have this, this lens of what are the, what are the character defining features, and you filter everything through that, then that's how you make your criteria-based decisions. So, um, so your um, uh, guidelines, again, you know, very much had like, let's focus on character-defining features. And again, I think they're great. I love this little check mark, like to navigate through it. This, they did it. The consultant earned his money on that. This is a nice, this is a nice example. Um, and you've got all, it's not just French colonials, like all, what are all the historic, you know, properties that we might have. Um, and the design guidelines try to do some of your thinking for you, okay, which is always helpful. I love it when people do that for me. I mean, it doesn't let you off the hook for having to think for yourself, but, but it gets you part way there um, because it lists what some of the character defining features are. 
right? So, oh, if it's a Greek Revival building, then these are some of the character defining features and that's what you want to pay attention to. Or right, if it's a Queen Anne, you might want to look at these character defining features. I know you can't see that, but it really was just a, an example. But the point and the thing that I want to get to before eight o'clock is <laughs> that, magic, eight is, right. is that um, um, this is not rocket science this figuring out what character defining features are and 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 it's nice that um that the consultants have done that for you and go look at that list um, but it's something that you can do yourself right um and that you really need to because you're the ones who are here looking at the property knowing the history of it trying to balance the you know the multiple goals of people in the in the community um and there's this three-step process for um, determining uh, the character defining features of, of a building and what I'm going to tell you again not rocket science there's a preservation brief I don't know if you're familiar with these or not but the National Park Service provides all kinds of information and preservation brief 17 is identifying the visual aspects of historic buildings as an aid to preserving their their character um, and it's it's really simple and, and straightforward um, you identify the overall and you look at the visual character at close range and then you go inside um, and so overall when you look at something you're looking at you know the shape the openings the roof the projections the trim the setting right those are elements that allow you to kind of get a sense of you know what the character is so um so this this building you know is a rectangle but it's got a cupola and a tower and a triangular pediment in the front and you can see the even openings uh, 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 you know across the the two levels you know the roof has has got some hip action you know going on the front center projects out um, you can kind of see some uh, trim along the cornice line and the setting is up on this hill and right those are the things that give it its character and if we alter any of those things right if, if we added a, another tower onto it or we cut down all the trees or you, you know right we would alter its, its its character right so its visual character comes from those those elements when you start getting closer you're really looking at and this is a different building um, but you're looking at the craft details and the the materials right and and so you know whether the um, mortar you know this is I, I forget what you call that it's it's, it's like grapevine mortar or something where it sticks out a little bit you know but but the kind of mortar the kind of stone how that's put together all of those um, close-up details are, are what give it its character um, and then you know thinking about the interior and, and mostly you don't do interiors is that is yeah, that right that. yeah um, so but you can imagine sub buildings right and, and kind of how you would do that so so really what you're trying to do is train yourself to kind of methodically go through um, and think about what the um, the character defining features are and, and I think that that given the work you've been doing you've been training yourself to do that right so so just kind of be more open and aware um, if you want to you know if you ever do get preservation brief 17 there is a worksheet in the back that kind of walks you through what all these elements are this is, is how I teach my students how to do it right is is to kind of learn that methodical way of looking at the building and saying what is it that gives it its character right so when you look at this building, what gives this building its character? The roof line. Okay, the roof line, right? It's 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 um, uh, almost like a little mansard roof, right? It's on an angle. The timber frame. And then this timber frame, right, with the the, the big pointy part of it, right, sticking up, and then the little ha you know the so again the roof is roof line is multi level. It's got this thing in the middle sticking out. Anything else? Yeah, it's disorganized. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's asymmetrical. I, I don't know what I'm going to say is, 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 right, but that's intentional, right? It's not like it was supposed I to be. I don't think so. I think that's I a know. poor architect. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, it's not whether you like it or not, right? So it's not about personal preference, you know, but, but it's about, um, you know, so, I mean, I can say, this is this is modeled after a, a kind of a medievally based style 
which emphasizes being asymmetrical. So you may like more classically oriented buildings and therefore you don't care for this, but that doesn't mean that it's wrong or that it should have been more, more you know, classical. Um, so, it's wrong by both architectural principles. So, um, so what else gives it its character? Okay, so again, we've got the, the, the storefront, so you can see the, the stairway going up to the across. upstairs. <laughs> Um, and then kind of a nice traditional transparent storefront. Um, anything else? The brickwork. The brickwork, okay, it's got some really interesting uh, detail in there, almost mimicking kind of a half timbering, right, to go along with the half timbering in the, um, in the projecting bay. The and the windows, right, the, the multiple panes, right? Mm -hmm. um, does anybody know what style it is other than ugly style? <laughs> uh, no, if it would have come across my desk, it would have been Mm. <laughs> so, so it's kind of a it's a well, it's a commercial building, but it's a kind of a Tudor revival building, um, and so it is trying to be asymmetrical. It's trying to do all of those things. Now, you didn't need to know what style it was in order to figure out what makes it it, right? There's what no makes seraphim. it distinctive, huh? There's house on seraphim with that Tudor okay. style. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so that was cute, though. So, so the <laughs> so the idea is. Uh, remember, I promise I only bring ugly buildings from other towns. So, um, but uh, um, but so you don't need to know what style it is. You don't need to be a professional, right? You can just look at a building and then try to figure out by looking at its overall shape and form and what its details are. What is it that gives it its character? And so then the question is, how do we protect that, right? And to what extent? do we go to protect that and partly it depends on how important it is to its overall character right where you're going to let things slide or not and then you know back to your question earlier about how important is it in the district already what does it contribute can we focus less on some of these details and and because really it's just creating a street wall there we'll let them do whatever they want you know so it just kind of it, de it depends but but it's not you and your likes or dislikes, it's thinking about what the character defining features are and then making those judgments based on this shared uh, ethic that we have. So a lot of design guidelines, including yours, um, have like specific characteristics, but they also have this general stuff. And this helps with our sense of like, well, what is it that gives it its character? The proportion of windows and doors the roof shape, the height, the scale, the details, the relationship of building masses and spaces, the directional expression, and the landscaping, right? And you already tonight addressed some of the, you were concerned about the landscaping and the look of this garage building in the overall, you know, in the backyard. And, and you've, you know, talked about um, uh, windows and doors and architectural details, um, you know, and, and maybe the, maybe the, um, important role of a 1950s house in the historic district is just filling an empty space and so the massing and the setback are more important than the materials of the of the um, you know of the exterior right so and you can make those kinds of judgments and that allows you some flexibility to deal with the reality of who you're talking to and what the contribution is to the whole district um, this directional expression is something that, um, that I wanted to, to really like point out to you. So when we look at this directional expression, right, it's very vertical, right? Um, and, um, and maybe the reason you don't like it is not because it's asymmetrical, but well, it's not because compatible with the two adjacent buildings. Because they're going to be more horizontal, right? Um, so, um, and this is just to show you that the same kind of language is in your guidelines, but you just have to trust me. Um, so, um, or read the guidelines. Or read the guidelines, yeah. Or you can say, like, I know that. Um, so looking at this top one, um, like, who, one of these things is not like the other, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, so what's the incompatible? The three-story. Big thing in the middle. Okay, the well, why? Maybe multifamily structure. Okay, so so why is it incompatible? He just said that's a multifamily. Okay, so so use is harder to perceive, 
okay? And, and use, we are often precluded from judging on use, right? So, so that might be true, but that's not going to be a, a basis for refusing that, right? Oh, we don't want multifamily, we want single family, right? It's either in the zoning or it's not. Um, but you said it's three story, right? Somebody said it was three story. Everything else is? Single story. Just one, yeah, right? One, maybe one and a half, mm -hmm. right? Um, okay, so, um, so its height is two, right? Its height and scale are wrong. For the for the okay, is there anything else? Just the setback. The setback is wrong too, right? It's it's closer to the street, it's, well, so it, it's not compatible. Built first? I just said one of these is not like <laughs> the other, okay. and right, and so if if they if they if they came and asked to do this, right, and you would say, no, not because you don't like multifamily places, <laughs> right, but because... Because we have a this, zoning order. This, this scale, <laughs> oh, well, no, that's not, it's, it's just me. I just like my space. Uh, well, it's it could be single family. family. It could, you're right, it could be single family. Yeah, but, but it's still, it's the, the, the scale is wrong. Scale is, wrong. is there anything else wrong? The setback, setback, mm -hmm. anything else? No, it's not Shape the same. Style. Okay. So, um, Looks like uh, a so it's very horizontal. The direction is very horizontal, right? Mm -hmm. And its roof is very low pitched. These are more medium pitched and they're more vertical, mm -hmm. right? So there are all kinds of objective ways in which this is incompatible with those, right? What about down here? Same thing in the opposite. It's not about what you like or not like. It's about are there, are there objective criteria upon which you can base a decision to say no. Instead of I just don't like it. Instead of I just don't like it. Because if you say I just don't like it, then and you're being taped, people are going to like, they're going to scream, right? That guy um, was trying to sell pancakes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, so, yeah, it's a tutor in the middle of a bunch of craftsmen. Okay. So, and style, style well, is, yeah. you know, is it, and style is good, but style is a slippery slope too, yeah. because style is a kind of a connoisseurship term. And, and when you're, when um, when David is writing the reason for <laughs> denying it, right? He it's wants something oh. more objective than style, right? Yeah. Um, you know, so we need to drill down a little more deeply. So, so what's wrong with it? You better sure, say fine. it has too much of a uh, vertical orientation versus the other buildings, which are a little horizontal. Okay. So the direction, the Real directional, pitch. the orient. Okay. The 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 roof shape. Is, where, where, yeah. is the way, yeah, and the setback, yeah. right? So, so we've just taken it from what we like and don't like, and whether we want to live in it or have it on our street, and we and we've put it into objective terms, right? Because and the way we've done that is, I didn't make you, but you were doing it. What are the character defining features of that street? The character defining features up here. The setback, the scale, the relationship of the buildings, the roof shapes, and this is out of alignment with that. What are the character defining features of this street, right? The buildings are all horizontal, you know, and they have a, a kind of a certain setback, and this, this violates that, right? So, so we've really turned it into objective reasons, right, based on the character defining features, okay? so. Guess which building I hate, <laughs> and why? Would it be the green roof building? Mm. It would be the green uh, roof. <laughs> Wonderful people. <laughs> I don't hate the people who did it. <laughs> right? Don't hate them. Right? Mm. Don't, just, right? Don't hate the actor. Hate the act. Don't right? hate the center. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. It was <laughs> something like that. So, um, <laughs> but yeah. So why? Why do I hate the building? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> Yes. Looks nice to me. I don't but, care. I don't okay, well, how, well, how a so? gabled roof among well, buildings that are yeah, right roofs. up in the middle. It's different. Shape. Okay, yeah. These lower, all are lower. horizontal, and this is very vertical, mm -hmm. right? These all are, you know, um, uh, kind flat of, roof. you know, flat roof, parapet, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then this has, you know, pitched roofs, and right there. Um, 
why? It's a little hard to tell. It sticks out just a little bit. It's like, why? Why did you? Why did you do that? <laughs> just, just to irritate me, I think. But, um, but again, it's not like, do I like it or do I not like it? It's that there, are, there are character defining features of that block that this particular building violates, right? And and you could say, I love it, but it doesn't fit in for these reasons, right? Um, uh, what's wrong with this? Why do I hate this? This is fun. I play this with my students all the time. Guess what the professor's thinking? Well, it looks mind? like somebody yeah. came in. Tile on the bottom. And it's like floor tile using on the all bottom. Materials. Yeah, it doesn't go with the rest of the material. Yeah, so, oh, so the, the storefronts, right? So that, as the kick plate, that's way higher than it should be, and it's some bizarre material, right? I mean, it's, it's um, so yeah, so they, it doesn't fit in. It, the, you know, the character-defining features of a building and those storefronts, mm -hmm. right, it's, it, it's, um, it's detracting from that, right? It's, it's not in keeping so of like what defines the, the, the character. Um, what about this? I hate this. Oh, this is my favorite so building. What kind of columns are those? Like or dislike. <laughs> but I hate it's for objective reasons. Stuff. Somebody <laughs> liked it. They built it. I know. Well, well and, and you know what makes me mad about color. this yeah. is that is that they spent a lot of money on that, and it just goes to show that bad design is not cheaper than good design. It's just bad. Amen. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, but why is that bad design? So oh. it's supposed to be a storefront, I mean, and it's been all filled in, so it doesn't have that transparency, right? Um, it's much less flexible as a space now, right? The person who did it wanted to have a, you know, a, a counseling office in there, and they wanted privacy, and, and of course they're long gone, and now everybody else who wants to use it as a storefront has privacy too, which <laughs> you actually don't want in a storefront. Um, and of course the windows, you know, commercial buildings shouldn't have that vertical, they should be horizontal um, uh, divisions. And so they spent a lot of money by the things that give that building its character, right? They, they destroyed that, right? Um, and, so, um, and so that's why it's wrong. And, and we can go on. Um, and you know, this is, I, I, this is a, um, uh, it's a Frank, no, it's a, um, oh, his name just fell out of my head. Um, it'll come to me. It doesn't matter. Anyway, this is a famous building, um, and it's this addition, which is, I love, right? But it's an addition to this building, and so is that appropriate? Um, um, what's the addition? It's a library. So, um, the tall ones are the addition? Yeah. This is, so this is the original, huh. and then they added on to the, to the library. And they didn't even do that consistent. Well, it's, it's postmodern, so they it's designed to look like different kinds of. They may not have had enough real estate, you know. So um, it, was a, it was a design choice, but again, it's a building. I I like it, but I'm not sure that it meets the criteria, <laughs> right? Um, so it's not about liking or disliking. It's about you know making a, a criteria based decision. And um, that's all I keep. Eight oh two. Well, okay. So. Um, so that was really, I mean. What about the other building? The, oh, the other building? So again, that, that's the, the top of it. No. Is added. People know. get paid to do that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So obviously no design standards, right? They didn't have to come before you to try to get permission to do that, right? Um, uh, and, um, but hopefully you could answer them yes or no, yeah, not based on whether you like it or not, but based on your ability to, um, uh, to, to assess what is it that gives a building its character, right? And so here, I think part of what gives this building its character is that it's low slung nature, right? And the transparency here on the first level, and there are a number of aspects that are not carried over in these other, in these other buildings. You know, um, here what gives part of its character is the materials, right? And, and so on the one hand, you can distinguish the new from the old, and so that's good, but 
On the other hand, it kind of dwarfs the original um, uh, building, and, and so I think it, it detracts from it. So, um, so really what I had next, and I, I wasn't sure we'd have time for it, and, 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 and we don't have to, is, is again, this decision-making process. You're juggling lots of things, right? You've got the design criteria, you've got the pro property owner talking to you, you know whether it's significant or not, you're thinking about what they're trying to do, you, you know, you either know about preservation and design history or, or, or not, right, and you're trying to come up with that decision, and it can be challenging, but really, it's, a, it's, it's a, just a flow, um, flow chart process of being clear, you know, what's the project, what are we looking at, is it compatible or, or not? And, and that compatibility decision is based on what are the character defining features, right? And then in terms of the, what they're trying to do, is what they're trying to do going to affect the character defining features in a way that is or is not consistent with our preservation philosophy as articulated in the standards. And that's ultimately a yes or no answer, right? Yes. No, it depends. <laughs> or you take it. Well, in, the, in that middle, it depends. But what you're doing is you're, you're funneling that depends down to yes or no because you're saying the, um, the aluminum framed window, the door, um, is, um, is going to allow us to see the historic door behind it and, um, and, and the presence of kind of a storm door isn't going to detract from the, the character defining features of that building. Could have if it had, had a solid panel and six mm -hmm. panes and whatever. Right. Right. Plus, if they had some functional thing that you didn't have with an old door. So, right, right. So each one of those, you're, you're, you're starting out with it depends, but what you need to move from depends to yes or no are the pictures, the explanation, and your own understanding of what gives it its character and how does this impact it. And it's reversible with a screwdriver. And, and it, yeah, and, and again, and that's, you know, because that's where then these standards come in, right? If it's reversible, right, then that allows you it's to cut the terms that. with the, and it the depends. Things because you can take it off later if you want to. Yeah. Yeah. There's a great a screwdriver statement. But I yeah, know. yeah. <laughs> There's a, a, a great, um, you know, story um, about uh, historic, um, I think it was a church or a, a school connected to a church um, and had a slate roof and then they they went back with um, just composite shingle there's a huge you know up, outcry about that um, but they didn't have the money to go back with slate but then 50 years later they went back with slate and it's like you know roofs are temporary you know what i mean that if somebody comes with a composite shingle roof 20 years later they're gonna you know they're going to come back, right? And so there's another another time to, to deal with that, or um, or the siding, or the windows, or or, or whatever it is that, that that you're dealing with. So one of I'm the city administrator. You know, okay. Uh, uh, we have a great yeah. deal of that in this town, just on roofs. Yeah. Most of the roofs were uh, on the real early structures were uh, wooden shingles. Right. However, in the uh, 19th century. Uh, standing seam metal became okay. the side. Yeah. But under those standing seam metals, we just strip them back. You'll find the the wood and the uh, evidence that they were wood shingle roofs when they were built. Mm -hmm. Or like game row, and like strips. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I've been involved in public policy studies and code enforcement on both sides of all issues yeah. over the years. And there was a time when a city acting judiciously in the administration of its codes and ordinances found support in the courts. That's eroded. Now we get overturned more frequently than we get uh, approved. 
what about historic preservation decisions? Helen, since since yeah. you really, as you pointed out with building codes, you know, it's either black or it's white, and, right. and, and we can generally defend our building codes. Land use is a little more problematic, right. but still, you know, there's a lot of case loss that we can rely on for right. land use decisions. Right. Yeah. There's How a often? Lot. Yeah. Okay. Go yeah, ahead. there is a lot of case law. Um, uh, uh, in support of historic preservation. And the, the key is that, um, uh, that, you have, um, that you have a process that allows for appeal, um, that you have some sort of hardship um, avenue, you know, you know, you can have strict standards, you know, for that, but, you know, so you can't be arbitrary, um, uh, but the, um, but it, you know, the Supreme Court has um, supported that uh, historic preservation is a valid exercise of the police power of the state. So there's a, um, uh, it's really, it's, it's part of the zoning um, uh, chain of, 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 of lawsuits, but um, uh, Penn Central is kind of the, the landmark case that, that basically says that um, historic designation is legally permissible. And but since then, you haven't seen an erosion of this court um, support for not these not for um, uh, uh, no not um, where the um, where it gets squishy is with um, takings law, and so um, uh, if and and takings law is the Constitution says government can't take property without. Um, co and without compensation, right? Um, and so, if if you say um, uh, like no, you can't because you can you can deny demolition. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Within the district. The, the district. Okay. So if you deny dem if you deny demolition, and then the property owner says you have taken the value of my property, um, and now you and it's worth million dollars and now you have to pay me um, uh, um, the so so in that lawsuit then um, uh, chances are it's not a takings because you would have gone through this very rigorous public vetted process and you would have had the hearing on the hardship of it and you would have Based on your responsibilities, kind of done all of those things. Um, doesn't mean they can't take you to court for that, but they would probably lose. Um, and then some of the some of the movement. Sort of the last time we had movement in the takings law um, uh, area focused on a thing called like temporary takings. And so, so it wasn't that you would um, uh, have to pay for as if you took the property in a like a land use condemnation, we completely take the property, but it would be temporary only for the purpose, only for the temporary time that the regulation was in effect and, and stuff. So I don't think it really applies to, to these kinds of, of decisions that, um, uh, and, and the, the Supreme Court has, has been um, firm with the notion that as long as a property owner is left with some valid use of their property that um, that it won't be ruled a, a, a takings and, yeah, and I'm not so concerned about the takings aspect yeah. Of it, so. yeah so that that's that's where when you when um, kind of the intersection with 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 we preservation have, have very law. few major projects where it, somebody would you can feel, feel like they should hire an attorney yeah but some people don't wait for rational decisions that are right. irrationally but Audubon is an example of one where if we just said no, um, yeah, you know, I, I, and we're not, we weren't inclined to, but it had me. Um, I could have seen, you know, that, that's a, it was a restoration of the uh -huh. hotel, St. Genevieve. And, right. I, I thought, you know, I thought that's, you can't tell me no, I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a court to to make you let me do it. Yeah, I, I think that, um, I haven't read anything other than the blurb, but, um, uh, I mean, and it's California, but somebody tore down a Richard Neutra house and they have to rebuild it. 
that was in the, yes. <laughs> in the in the in the paper, you know, as a you know. So and again, it probably. It wasn't a Supreme Court decision, so who knows, you know, how that how that will go. Um, but there's been no backing away that um, that that historic preservation is a valid police power of the state. And so, if you have a process like you have, then you can tell people what they can and cannot do with their with their with their property. Um, and again, I think the piece that sometimes people miss is the. Like if they truly have a hardship and they really can't afford wood siding, you know, you might want to let them have hardy plank siding. You know what I mean? And it, and it, that's already built into into your system. Um, I think a lot of these get resolved because at the local level, they're sort of the the political pressure of um, best to get most of what we want rather than to risk losing everything. I, I know Cape Girardeau has made choices like that, you know, when somebody started a project and then ruined a thing, and then it's like, how much of the city council is gonna back us if we tell them they have to take this all down and replace all that, and, or do we just try to do better next time, you know? And, and so I think that's how we avoid some of those legal challenges. And, but it should it come, and you, the Supreme Court's got your back. Is is what I is what I can okay. say. And That's there's fine. been no lessening of that, um, and no murmuring of lessening of that that I've heard. Good. Now, I have more in your packet that I don't need to show you. All that it is. Do you, are you familiar with the this letter to George? by um, Robert Stipe. Are you familiar with that at all? This is a great resource because what it does and the slides that I, it, it provides that language for thinking about how to express these ideas. Um, you know, the height of the building is generally the same, you know, so pro and con arguments for these different characteristics, you know, about materials, um, you know, pro architectural detailing, kind of how to, how to use language that articulates that it's not that you don't like it, it's that it doesn't, you know, it's not compatible for these objective reasons, right? The architectural detailing is, and it, it's almost, it's a, um, whenever uh, Cape Girardeau gets a new uh, person in your position, I often get called on to kind of help out. And, and so we kind of sat down and said, okay, you're gonna write it, you know, and look here. And, to some of these words is, is so I can send that to you if you'd like that. But I think it's a great resource yeah, that for would be, that would for be really useful. Yeah, it's it's just it's, and again it's it's just an objective language that a judge is going to look at and say it's not a bunch of people who didn't like you personally or don't like your politics or don't like your style. It's that objectively. They have standards and ways of, of looking at those standards and measuring your project against those standards. So, anyway. All right, I'll be sure to send that. Thanks. Remind me if I don't. Okay, okay. you're, you're welcome. Easier, right? You're welcome. Was, yeah. It was a lot easier. Yeah, right yeah. well, you, you, can, you can always invite me back if, if you know, we have a topic that, that you want to pursue. I'm, 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 I'm happy to do that. You know, um, benevolent dictatorships work. Welcome. What? Yeah. Benevolent dictatorships work. Yeah, it's a very efficient way to run the program. Oh, that's not mine. Thank you. You're welcome. You'll be back in the spring, won't you? If, um, if, if you invite me, if you, you can... The you old can, school. The old school. Oh, in, in May. Yeah, I'll be here in May. Yeah. Can you coordinate with a meeting? No. Uh, or do you have a certain schedule you have to... I don't know. The, I don't remember. Well, yeah, field school is when field school is. <laughs> so, um, okay. Yes, I will definitely. Do that. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to do it, um, and, and again, I'm happy to. I mean, I can't come all the time, but I'm, I am happy to come. I'll get you. Yes. Because yeah. I've been thinking about it. And that we're past events. So. <laughs> you know, it's, um, 
And thank you, because I, I know, I mean, we've met, and I know you, yeah. I was just trying to, like, uh, well, you know, you meet a lot of people. Place <laughs> you as, you First know, met you in Poplar Bluff at a yes. presentation you were making. Right. And then, uh,